I think I went and got very drunk and went home with a guy who I met hanging off scaffolding on Fifth Avenue. It was all a mistake, but the great thing about Pride is everybody forgives you the next day. The story of my first Pride is that I was meeting up with my sister who was in town with her then new boyfriend who would become my brother-in-law. I was meeting him for the first time and we were meeting up for brunch on the Sunday of the Pride March in the West Village. But I wasn't out of the closet to her at the time, so I couldn't tell her that I really wanted to go to the Pride March and clap a fan and wave a flag and get beads from an Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield employee. So instead I ate a terrible egg Benedict. In San Francisco in 1989, I went down to the Castro and Market and I decided that as soon as I saw an organization or a group go by that I felt like I belonged to, I would um, join them. And around the corner came this car that looked like a police car and all these young queer radicals with high heels beating this police car to protest police brutality and violence against the LGBTQ community. And I said, ah, my people. And here we are 30 years later and it's still the same old story, so we need to write a new story. Toot sweet! I was learning Dutch because I was going to live in Holland, and one of the teachers was this woman, Bianca Sternberg. And I had no idea, but later on, I realized I had the biggest crush on her ever. I think that was my very first Pride experience. We didn't have pride in Traverse City where I grew up and just this past year on the campaign trail I went home and it was one of the most beautiful prides I had ever seen. There were, there were no floats, no corporations, no marching bands. It was literally just thousands of people shutting down streets, walking through uh, downtown Traverse City. And it felt so powerful to be surrounded by my family and my friends and my community, a community that I grew up in feeling like I wasn't allowed to be out in. Now seeing their, you know, most busy, thoroughfare full of people celebrating their pride. I suppose that wasn't my first pride. What was your first pride? Uh, I was thinking it was when I was living in Milwaukee, shortly after I came out and just like walking around and feeling like, like all of these people here accept me for me. Yeah. Like all of the people celebrating pride right now um, are, are proud of me in a way. The first time that I experienced a parade was here in New York City. At the time I was dating uh, this beautiful uh, trans girl named Nina. Uh, we went to the, uh, to, the, to the Dyke March first and uh, a group of lesbians uh, told us that we didn't belong there. So we were very disappointed about the LGB uh, part of the acronym. But still, we made an effort to go to Pride and we had so much fun. It was incredible, like seeing all these people being extra queer. Uh, it was amazing, I couldn't believe it. It was great, it was, it was a beautiful experience. I had just come out to my family and in Pensacola, Florida, where I'm from, there is a big gay weekend on the beach. The town, the city of Pensacola doesn't actually recognize it as a pride. And I remember growing up and sort of hearing about Memorial Day weekend being the weekend that you don't go to the beach because the gays descend upon the beach. Uh, and I went. I was flooded with mixed emotions. I had all of these preconceived notions about what being there meant. But I also experienced seeing people be free. I knew that it was something that I wanted and uh, it, it was encouraging to me and it was validating for me. I was 17 years old in high school in the 90s and I wanted to start this club called Pride, People Resisting Ignorance and Discrimination of Expression. I was very proud of myself for that acronym. And the school wouldn't let me do it, of course, so I took on the administration and eventually had this big gay rights demonstration out front of the school across the street from the parking lot where all these kids were like holding poster boards and chanting and even football players had these rainbow beaded bracelets that we had made and they were wearing them and shaking their fists out the window of the bus. And uh, it was pretty remarkable because it was sort of the dawning of the queer youth movement. Like this was happening all over the country. Uh, you know, I feel really happy to have been part of that history. So yeah, you're welcome. <laughs>